Hi, I'm Katie Pertit, and today I'm going to show you some selective recoloring techniques that I use. This is using a free template here that is available in the text below. So you can download this template there and follow along. So I'm starting here with the free template. In order to save some time, I'm going to go in and open a version that I used where I put my photos in. I added photos. I added a couple of additional elements from the Vintage Traveler collection. Again, links for this will uh, be below. But if you notice, my photos are more blue and um, navy and brown, not so much orange and green, but I like these elements. So I'm gonna show you how I recolor these elements in order to match my photos a little bit better. So I'm gonna start with this ticket paper that is, comes in the template and is just kind of a painted um, collage of tickets. Now you could just go up and image, adjust, and adjust your hue saturation. But that's gonna just kind of change everything. And maybe I don't want you know, these elements here to lose their um, neutral creamy color. So what I'm gonna do is with that image selected, image adjustments, ooh, replace color. And this will bring up my, close out some of these windows. Um, this will bring up the replace color dialog box and the default is to have this eyedropper selected so i'm going to click on the orange and you can see the preview it can be very selective in the range of orange or it can be a more broad selection i'm going to kind of go in between then you can use the plus sign to grab a darker version of it and then I'm going to come down here to the hue and you'll notice that some of the yellow is going with it. That's okay for me, but not, um, not the cream. The cream is still staying nice and neutral, which is what I wanted. So just kind of going for the color I want. Whoops. And you want to, change the green too, you need to do it on a separate step. So we would again go up, image, adjust, replace color, and click on the green. Try to get the different shades of the green. And again, bring it to a blue. Maybe lighten it a little bit. Okay, so that looks great, but now the balloon and such doesn't match that I added in yeah. from the Vintage Travelers. So I'm gonna go to that layer here. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing because if I just did an image, adjust, hue saturation, and tried to bring it to the blues, it, you know, it changes the ticket, it kind of changes the definition, everything. Don't really wanna go there. So be a little bit more selective and go in and replace each of your colors. Bring it more to a blue. You can darken it and then bring up your saturation okay, so nice. to get a more intense color. But that's not really what I'm going for. I say, so if you take this here, just get it there. And sometimes the tweaking is easy and sometimes not so much. And you can see it picked up a little bit of the tag color too. And for me, that's okay. If I wanted to be more selective, I can decrease the fuzziness to have a more selective recoloring. You can see there, it got a lot less of the color. All right, and then just go in again, replace color, and do our orange. We're gonna pump that up, bring down our saturation. 
and that's good. Now for this label, even though the label is blue, it's not really the look that I want. I wanna get more of the navy that you see in her sweatshirt. So if I just did the image adjust hue saturation, it's gonna again change that back, um, this neutral color here of the ticket or the label that I don't wanna change. So we're gonna go up here, image adjust, again, replace color. You know, they say you repeat things so many times and you'll remember, right? And we're gonna go darker to really get more of the navy color. So when you go darker, it, help, it allows you to increase your intensity of the color too, when you go back and increase your saturation. If you hadn't gone darker and you pumped up your saturation, it just gets really bright and lighter, but the darker brings down the intensity so you can adjust that. All right, um, we would repeat the same thing on this cluster down here, but I'm not gonna bore you and keep going through the same thing. Um, the other thing that comes in this template is the page title. The page title was done in a brown to match this background. And I want to change it to a blue. There's a number of ways that you can change it. I'm just going to show the way that I like to do things. So I made a new layer above the page title layer, holding down the command key and hovering over the page title. You see the square with the dotted line. I'm going to click on that and that makes the title an active selection. I'm going to turn off visibility on that title and I'm going to select a new foreground color. I'm gonna go with the dark blue that I selected for the label. And then I'm gonna go to edit, fill, and fill with the foreground color, normal blending, 100%, and then deselect. And then that matches better. But now my map in the background doesn't quite match either. So again, I'm gonna follow the same steps. I'm gonna hold down the command key, hover over the map layer, click, you get all the marching ants, edit, fill, fill with my foreground color, deselect. Now that's a little intense, not really what I want to do. So I'm going to go to, um, I know the key commands that I would do. Let's see if I can, uh, yeah, well, okay. So we can do this a couple of ways. We can lower our opacity to make it more faint. And that kind of works. If you look compared to what it was, that blue looks much better. But we're going to go to, ah, here it is, curves. Okay, so let me go back. I'm going to undo. Undo again. There we go. Okay, and image adjust curves. I use this a lot when I have like a black stamp and I don't want it to be so intense on my page. If I take the bottom left corner and pull it up, that's going to lighten my darkest value to not be at 100% strength. The thing about doing it this way is you're not losing the opacity. So if you were to um, merge any of your layers, you're not gonna lose that opacity. You're just um, changing the intensity of the color. So this is something that I frequently do. You know, you'll find in some of my templates that there's a number of gray elements in the background and a lot of them are not um, transparent it's just more of a lighter color so we'll go with that and again we have the same thing with the paint in the background it doesn't quite match um, with this one though I think command U is also image hue saturation this one would work just fine to do the slider because it's one flat color it's when it's multiple colors that it's really a good idea to go in and do your image, adjust, and replace a color selectively. So 
You could pump it up in color and bring it down. And you could do the same thing here in adjusting your curves. You could really lighten it. And those are, those are some of my simple ways. And looking at this, you know, I don't really, this ticket paper to me now that I'm looking at it, it's a little too yellow. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select the yellow. Had I selected this cream first, it would have also changed an, a little bit of the orange and yellow tickets and might not have given me the ideal result. So I'm just gonna tone down the saturation, maybe brighten them a little bit. And they're not so yellow. So if I undo that, you can see the difference as I toggle back and forth. It's a subtle difference, but it really does impact your page. Especially when you think about printing, sometimes different printing services can be a little heavy on the yellows and reds. So um, to tone that back isn't a bad thing. All right, so that concludes. I hope I showed you something that maybe you didn't know and learned a little something to take into your pages. And until next time,